G'day everyone, today we're going to be talking about 1KZ fuel pumps uh, and how to time them basically. I just want to start this video by saying don't buy the specialty tools that you see in other videos, even if it's for a Toyota or a Bosch pump. Yes, this is a Toyota Bosch pump. Uh, it may look similar to other things you've seen online, but I have noticed there aren't many videos, if any at all, about the 1KZ pump. I bought all the specialty tools thinking I could get stuck into this and you don't need them. You just don't need them. If you don't plan on pulling your pump apart, you don't need the tools. You don't need the tools to time the pump. So I'll jump in to showing you how to do that now. Uh, and I'll also show you all these tools that I've bought that I realize now that I don't need. So this here is the a tool I saw in another video where someone was timing a pump in a Land Cruiser. It was a great video, but I was fooled into thinking I needed this for my car. Uh, this is just a generic dial indicator set. And this is a socket set for Bosch diesel pumps. Now, I bought them online, they're all kind of cheap, but I mean, if you don't need them, why buy them? Now this here is my spare engine just hiding in the corner, uh, and it's great for demonstrations like this. Uh, we're gonna be taking a closer look at this area, the fuel pump and the, the case, the back side of the case here. Now before we jump into that, it's important to note there is a mark here on the pump. You won't be able to see it when it's bolted to the engine all that well, especially if I'm trying to film, but you can see halfway between this ear here, there is a line, and we need to align that with something on the back of the timing cases. So I'll show you that now. Now it might be a bit hard to see that mark, as I said earlier, but it lines up with the top of this lump of metal here. And basically, all you need to do is clock the pump, you loosen off the bolt here, the one that you can't see back in there, and the one on the back of the pump, loosen them off, clock the injector pump, tighten it back up and just make sure your mark lines up with this on the back of the timing gear cover. Now the only reason it would be wrong is if you've taken your pump off or had it rebuilt or rebuilt your engine, but from factory it should be right and there's no need to touch it once it's set. Now it's a bit easier with the engine out of the car, this one specific nut. Uh, I've got some footage of that already from when I rebuilt the car, so that's how that's done. Uh, now let's just jump into it. Always start with the hardest bolt uh, because then the easier to access ones are actually going to hold the pieces in position while you crack the difficult ones loose. Uh, if you leave until last, you've got all the weight on them and it's just a shit time. So let's, uh, let's clock this fuel pump. All right, there's one thing to show you on an engine that's not in the car, but I'll show you on this engine as well. Now, last time I did this, I had this spanner cut in half laying around. Uh, and then I kind of had to manipulate it and... All right, as I was saying, I've got this half 12 mil here. I had to grab it with pliers and crack it loose because the engine's in the car uh, and it's all a bit shit. All right, as you can see, I've got that half spanner on, that really difficult nut all the way down in there. I'll try to get another angle. All right, so we've cracked that one loose. We can come to the one on the front here. Crack that one loose. It'll help to take your front wheel off. Now, if you're working on a Hilux like me, you might want to move this power steering line just so you can get to that bracket all the way down in here. You see that little nut below these fuel lines? You can undo that and then you can clock your injector pump. And we can see here, it's all clocked. Uh, it looks wrong from this angle because I'm a bit below, but that line lines up with the marking on the block. Not the block, the timing gear cover, sorry. That all lines up, we can tighten that down and uh, should be running tip top. Now, originally when I rebuilt this engine, if you haven't seen those videos, check them out. But I have rebuilt this engine, I put it in and I had it clocked wrong uh, and I was throwing an error code uh, which was number 41 or 14. Uh, I went problem solving for both. One of them was a TPS code, the other one was a timing code. Uh, I read it as a TPS code. There weren't any issues with the TPS, so then that's why I went with 41 instead of 14. Now, that'll make more sense to you when I show you. Well, let me explain. When you have an error code, you get an engine light, uh, and then you can put the car into diagnostic mode with a paper clip on the diagnostic port you bridge two ports, but basically you bridge them and then that 
puts the engine into, di into diagnostic mode and then that engine light, instead of it just being constantly on, when you turn the car on and go in the car, it'll blink. In my case, it was like one blink, a pause, and then four blinks. So that meant error code 14. You could Google that. You Google that specific error code. For me, it was TPS. Problem solved for TPS, there was nothing wrong. It was all plugged in, it all looked fine. So then I went problem solving for 41 because maybe I was reading it wrong. It was four blinks and then one instead of one then four. Now, when I looked up this error code and the symptoms I was having, uh, they seemed more in line with number 41. And that was that the engine light was on at low engine speeds between idle and 1500. And then anything above 1500, the engine light cleared. So that was a fair indication to me that it was timing related, especially with what I'd already researched online. So if that sounds like an issue you're having, uh, you might want to check your timing, and that's how you uh, how you fix it. All right, so you can see all of these pins are labelled on the underneath of the cap. Now, what we want to do is bridge TC and E1, which I've done here with a piece of wire. You can use a paperclip, whatever. That's going to put the engine in diagnostic mode, and then you've got to Google each error code depending on the flashing lights. Now I'll leave a link in the description to a website with all the error codes and how to read the blinking lights. But for me, I don't have any issues with my engine, so there are no blinking lights to actually show you what's going on. Alright, that's it for this video on the 1KZ and the injection pump. Now, there are plenty more videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out, subscribe while you're there, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one.